You ever been excited for a speech or a presentation, but then the person gets up there and starts talking like this, and even if you're really into the content, you can't really listen to them because they sound like they're a robot on stage reading from a script. Or they get really, really nervous and they start talking super fast, and even though there's emotion in their voice, you can't really process what they're saying or think about it because they're talking at the speed of sound. <sighs> These are both issues that we can fix, and not only are they easy to fix, but by fixing them, you're going to make your speech come to life more and make it easier to memorize. The triple whammy. Let's talk about it. A speech is more than the words you say. How you say them matters too. Think of a singer who gets on stage and knows all of the words to the song they sing, except they don't hit any of the notes. We'd say that's a bad singer. It doesn't matter that they said the right words because they didn't say them in the right way. As a speaker, we want to have the same mindset. Just because the words you wrote down were great doesn't mean you're going to give a great presentation. This is where vocal variety comes in. There are three huge benefits to adding vocal variety to your speech. Benefit one is that it brings life to your speech. It shows that you're passionate about the topic at hand. This will engage the audience more and make them pay attention. Benefits two and three are that the speech is more memorable. Two, it's more memorable to the audience. And three, that means it's more memorable to you as well, which means you're less likely to make mistakes or forget where you are. The reason this is, is because our brain actually remembers things in emotions. Let me give you an example. Try to think of the funniest thing that's ever happened in a classroom setting. The funniest thing. Maybe it was at high school or college. Once you have that in your head, try to remember what the teacher put on the board that day. Chances are, you can't pick out the details, or you just don't know it all, because your brain remembered the emotional part of that day, the humor of the funny thing that happened. It didn't remember the words on the whiteboard, because our brain doesn't remember in words. So if that's all your speech is, it's just words, you're not going to be able to remember it as well, and the audience isn't either. So we need to be baking emotions into our speech using vocal variety. But how exactly do we do that? What is the first thing you should do when you get in front of your audience for a presentation? If you said start your presentation, you've already made a mistake. The first thing you should do is pause, look around the room, take a deep breath, and gather your thoughts. This has a few benefits. One, it shows the audience you're confident. Who do you trust more? The person who walks onto the stage, takes a deep breath and starts speaking, or the person who gets on stage and immediately starts talking like they want to get it out of the way or get their speech over with? It's probably the person who took their time. Your speech will also start better if you take a few seconds to gather your thoughts beforehand. When you rush onto the stage and start talking immediately, you set a fast pace in your brain. This can lead you to talking fast or your brain getting ahead of itself, which can lead you to skipping things or losing your place, and we don't want that either. This is just one of many situations you can use pauses to make a presentation infinitely better. Pauses are necessary because our brains are very active. As I'm speaking, your brain is actively listening to me. If I include pauses in my speech, it allows your brain a little bit of time to ramp up and think for itself, make some connections, validate what I'm saying. If you give a whole speech with no pauses, the only time your audience has to think about what you say is at the end. When you do that, they're likely to forget some of the stuff at the beginning, they're likely to lose their place, or not be fully engaged. Here are a few situations where adding a pause can really benefit your speech. This isn't an exhaustive list, it's just enough of one to help start you thinking about it so as you write your presentations in the future, you yourself can realize where the pauses should be. The first situation is when you do a 180. If you're leading your audience down one path but quickly take another, you should pause and let them think about the new direction you're going. 
Whenever you make a bold claim, that's another time you should pause and allow your audience to validate or invalidate that claim in their head. When you say something complex, you risk losing people that try to think about it. So pause, allow them to think about it for a sec, and then continue speaking so they aren't lost just thinking about what you said. Whenever you do a transition from one section to the next, you should pause to allow them to stop thinking about what you said and then focus on what you're about to say. And then finally, whenever you ask a question, even if it's rhetorical, the more complex the question, the longer you should give them. You want them answering your questions, at least in their head, even if they're not doing it out loud. And remember, all of this is something you should do in advance. Rehearse the pauses, know where they're going to be, because when you do that, it also helps prevent you from speaking too fast. If you've rehearsed pauses and you get to a point in your speech where you know there's a pause, you'll stop. And if you've been talking too fast, it gives you a second to realize that and then readjust your speed going forward. Something called mirror neurons exist in all of our brains. And the function of these neurons is to replicate behavior they see in other humans. If you've ever smiled because someone else smiled, you've experienced the effects of mirror neurons. We can use these to our advantage when speaking. By changing up our tone or the speed at which we talk, we can slow down our audience's train of thought or speed it up super fast. Today, I want to give you two new voices you can use in your speech to help emphasize certain points. I know there's a million different ways you can speak, a million different speeds or tones, but we're just gonna focus on adding two to your regular speaking voice. The first is what I like to call your enlightened voice. You should use this when you have a huge revelation or something is supposed to click for your audience. It kind of sounds like your voice got a little bit higher. You started talking slower, almost like you're trying to inspire your audience, because sometimes you will be. When you use this voice, people will notice, and oftentimes they'll know that you've put effort into your speech. It's gonna sound better when you do this at the right time. That was the first voice, the enlightened voice. It's gonna sound a little different for you and you might emphasize more or less than me, but it's a good tool to have in your arsenal. A lot of great speakers use this voice. Even Tony Robbins, amazing motivational speaker, does this voice when he wants to really drive home something inspirational. The next voice you should be aware of is what I like to call your challenging voice. The one where you go against something. Maybe you say something and go back on it or you're challenging some social opinion or a norm. That's when you wanna use the challenging voice. In the last part of the video, I asked, what's the first thing you should do when you get on stage? And it was a bit of a trick question. So when I said, if you think the answer is start your presentation, you're wrong. I raised my voice, I got a little faster, and that engages you in a different way. It gets you thinking, I'm wrong? What? Excuse me? Use a challenging voice when you want something short and sweet to be really important in your speech. Hopefully this helps you. I'm losing my voice from doing this video. It's been a long day. So if you have any questions, be sure to leave them down below and subscribe for more. I'm willing to engage with all of you in the comments if you have anything to say. So thank you for your time.